Critics of new immigration legislation introduced in the U.S. Congress say it favors illegal immigrants and non-citizens over U.S. citizens. The bill is called the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021, and it dismantles many of the immigration policies of the Trump administration. Here to discuss the impact on migrants and Americans living in low-income communities is Namrata Singh Gujral. Ms. Gujral is the director of the recent documentary film America's Forgotten. Namrata, you traveled worldwide to produce a film looking at the dangers of illegal immigration and the failures of U.S. immigration policy. Now, I want to discuss your film in a moment, but first, I'm, I'm assuming you believe this new legislation is just more of the same. It fails to address severe immigration issues that need to be resolved. Your thoughts, please. I think even worse, actually. First of all, thank you for having me, Gary. I appreciate it. Even worse. And the reason worse is because we actually did make some headway in the past four years. And in some ways, what this legislation is doing is not only is it more of the same, but it's actually tracking back the progress that we made, which is very unfortunate because for once we were actually making progress on uh, this terrible tragedy called open borders. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I think it's even worse. Well, President Biden halted border wall construction. He reversed President Trump's uh, remain in Mexico policy. The U.S. Citizens Act of 2021 would create refugee processing in Central America and provide $4 billion in aid to those countries uh, in hopes of discouraging migrants from traveling through Mexico to the U.S. So what do you think of those proposals? The first thing that I would say, and I'm sure President Biden is aware of this, as is his administration, um, do it, processing anything in Central America or South Asia, India, Pakistan, wherever that is, Afghanistan, wherever you're processing. The problem with doing something in lo locally in these countries, and actually I'm making a sequel right now, America's Forgotten Too, where we talk about the, the refugee abuse in Kenya from the Somali camps. It's the same problem. You don't have accountability from the local sources, and there's going to be far more abuse when you do that. Now, I know you encourage the Biden administration to put Americans first. I know your film exposes how Americans, especially in low-income minority communities, are harmed by U.S. immigration policy. Explain that to us. My heart aches today for Americans that are poor and that are underserved. We have a lot of Americans hurting right now, a lot. And there's, a, there's several ways that Americans get hurt. We'll talk about just one of the issues. In America's Forgotten, we show the host asking all of the folks on the first Democratic debate on the stage if they would uh, be in favor of health care for illegal immigrants. Today, it's in the news that taxpayer-funded uh, benefits would be now even more further expanded to illegal immigrants. It's not so much that we don't want to be humanitarian. The problem is a lot of Americans who fall through the cracks are folks that are just above that sort of poverty line where they're not m making enough money, but not enough to pay their health care benefits. And it's those Americans that are suffering. And guess what? A lot of those Americans are folks that voted for Mr. Biden, the African-American community, the Latino American community. And in your film, you examine the dangers of illegal immigration and human trafficking. Tell us about that. Do you think this new immigration policy will help reduce human trafficking and drug smuggling issues at our southern border? No, actually, to the contrary, um, one of the things that I address in America's Forgotten, I tell the story, I went to actually meet with some coyotes in, when I was in India. It was a, a meeting that was set up by a very well-known journalist in India. And they were showing that uh, clip of the first Democratic debate where everyone was in favor of giving health care to illegal immigrants. And they were literally using that as fodder to recruit people to give them money. Because remember, it's a lot of money. I mean, there's per person from India is paying anywhere from fifty to $75,000 based on what deal they're getting. Africa's paying, this is to the United States, Africa's paying forty to 50000 Central America's paying up to the tune of 15000 per person, Mexico up to the tune of 10000 So they use it as a recruitment tool to get this money. Quickly, uh, you say this new America is run by China, India, big tech, where Americans don't matter. So how are they shaping, influencing our immigration policy? What's their goal and the consequences for the USA? Um, my family is actually of Indian American descent, and I'm an immigrant, and I'm a very proud immigrant. 
but I also love the United States. I will tell you, for any Indians that are watching, this is not an anti-Indian stance, by the way. This is a pro-American stance, which does not have to be confused with anti-Indian or anti-Chinese or even anti-Big Tech, for that matter. But here is, here's the facts. When you look at Google, for example, Google has four large headquarters in India. Most of the folks that are working for Google in India are Indian, and that's okay, except no one's gonna care for your country as much as Americans are. So when you've got China and India pretty much creating not, a, not just a lot of the product that we're consuming in the US, but also, uh, you know, they're gatekeeping our information. So you've got your information channels and your product channels, both at China and India, and big tech and big corporations are sort of handling this from a standpoint of it helps their bottom line. The only person that affects is Americans because no one is going to care for you like you are. For everyone else, it's just a business. When they're global, their allegiances to their company, no country. Okay, the film is America's Forgotten, Namrata Singh Gujral. You know the subject well, and we thank you for taking the time uh, to share your insights with us today. My pleasure.